And so my name's Craig Reynolds, I'm with Ixia. Uh, I look after our Edge Network strategy and we're introducing the iX Probe this week. So I'll pass it around. Um, I, I, do, I do need it back. That actually was funny because we, we did the same sort of thing in one of our sales meetings early on. It was a different prototype and uh, there ended up being a brouhaha because we couldn't find it afterwards and nobody had admit to having taken it, which is crazy. But anyway, um, so uh, take a look at it. It's a very, very simple device. We purpose built it to uh, kind of be a small form factor, hardy that you, know, you can put on sort of the, the shelf above the, the fryer in the uh, local you know, Taco Bell perhaps, and uh, easy to plug in. Uh, key things at the bottom, right? We want a small footprint, we want it easy to deploy, zero touch deployment. I'll talk more about that in a moment. And then um, you know, at these sites, you don't have technical personnel. Right, and we again part of the purpose is avoid the truck rolls, and so uh, it's it's easy to plug in. You'll see there's kind of the two ports on the front. You plug in one side, plug in the other. It's the in and out, and the power on the back, which is um, USB. And then one thing I haven't sort of touched on that that I that I'll spend a little more time in just a moment is kind of two core capabilities. One is very simple, right? It gives them SNMP traffic. Uh, statistics and information traps and so on that they can set and configure and then also uh, I think a more rich tool with synthetic uh, monitoring some people call it active test you, you might have heard it kind of be called both ways but essentially uh, what we do there is provide a lot of quality of service kind of quality assurance capabilities again I'll talk a little bit more about that in just a moment a question yeah. about this I'm, I've never worked in a service provider network I come from purely enterprise side um, one of the themes we've been hearing this week is network visibility, and this is being built into devices, whether it be SD-WAN or, or other equipment, and just getting that network visibility on the enterprise side. Is this a gap on the service provider side? Like, they don't have that type of network visibility built into, um, you know, service provi provider gear that's uh, put out there where something like this is uh, required? Are you feeling that gap or yeah. I'm trying to figure out exactly what gap in the market you're trying to fill. Yeah, no, I, absolutely. So, so um, I'll say yes and no to, to the way you phrase the question. So if they have, if, if they're the last mile provider and or if they have something like an SD-WAN, if they have a, a CPE they can get to, in theory, they could build some of this capability into whatever box it is, right? Um, in the use case I'm talking about, they literally, they don't have that because it's not theirs. Right, or they're not providing um, the SD, SD WAN service. We actually are working with one customer that does provide the SD WAN box in most, most all the cases. And again, in theory, you can do the R&D and investment or partnering to try and you know, get that kind of code and capability on the box. But then you have another thing going on the box. You have to do that investment. This is a simple, kind of easy to scale uh, box that you can still plug in. And so what we're finding is, is even when um, they're like, hey, we, we got it covered on this part of the network because we have a device there that we can deal with. Um, in some of those cases, we're partnering with them to embed some of the, the Hawkeye code there so they can do some of their tests and quality assurance and quality service type tests. Um, but on the other ones, they, they literally don't have anything there. So, it, so it's like a, a literal gap that they just don't have any visibility to. But what we're finding is when the cases are like, hey, it's kind of silly for us to monitor one part of the network one way and one the other. Let's, let's do it all the same and then kind of roll that back up so, so it's easy to, to manage and deploy. Unifies your visibility then? What's that? Unifies your visibility. Exactly, exactly. So is the use case here, I'm trying to, trying to better understand the use case for an MSP that is coordinating the circuits and providing that to an organization, but they are not necessarily involved in the management of that organization's network infrastructure. Is that? Yes. Easy? Yeah, no, I think, I think that's true. I, I think it works the other way too, but obviously if they, again, if they have something that can be in that managed net that network already, that, or, or, they, or it's actually on their premise. Right, that's the part I'm trying to figure out right? is if you've got, you know, let's say you have an SD-WAN at every site, you've got metrics and overlays and you can, you know, drill down into that. Um, I would think that you know this would be more for when you don't have access to it. It is. It is largely for when you don't have okay. access to it. Again, I, it, there's some value in unifying kind of the approach mm -hmm. and simplifying that on kind of their operational side for it all behaving the same way and the same APIs and everything to pull it mm -hmm. into their overall management system. But it is absolutely the use case I'm talking about now okay. is when they don't have access to that. Got absolutely. it. Okay. Yeah. Or they're not providing that piece. So, so you could even think about it again. This particular example, I think there's broader ones, but you know they're providing the link service and they don't have you know that that sort of box there that they own and can can use any other questions 
So uh, again, I, just for sake of, of time and, and so on, I, I won't go into detail, but uh, there, again, there's kind of a core capabilities. One is you know, the simple SNMP traffic monitoring statistics and traps and so on that they can configure. The other piece is our Hawkeye platform, which does, again, synthetic test, uh, or sorry, synth synthetic monitoring or active test. But really what it's doing is going out and saying, okay, um, I know how different traffic will flow on the network and different actions maybe an end user is gonna take. And it ranges a, 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 a a bunch of different tests, everything from MDI for video streaming, MOS scores for voice over IP. For example, we partnered before where somebody's going to roll out a new unified communications and they want to know how that's going to really work, where the obstacles are going to be, you know, is it configured properly, pro uh, properly to do that. Uh, you know, uh, basic network KPIs like uh, uh, jitter and latency and, and so on. Um, so a lot of different things we can do with that kind of part of it, with that, with that endpoint available for them to run and configure those tests. And then, um, as I mentioned, a key part of the design was the simple uh, deployment uh, to make sure that it kind of operates without you know, somebody technical having to install it and roll a truck out there. Uh, I'll talk how that kind of works operationally briefly in just a moment, but the idea again is it's very simple. You got the power on the back, you plug in the A and B ports, and one side is, at least in this case, you know, the cable modem, if you will, and on the other side is the uh, customer's router. I think this was actually a pretty interesting, sort of subtle, but, but neat kind of technology that we built into it uh, called inline adoption mode where basically, you know, again, one, the scenario here is that they don't own that last mile. So, so literally, even to like ping a device with an IP address that's unique, they, they don't have that uh, a lot of times. And so they'll have to pay another you know, 10 bucks, right, to a writer. Now, if that's 1,000 sites or 10,000 sites, that becomes, you know, part of their, so part of their cost problem. So we, uh, we created this inline adoption uh, technology where, uh, you know, approach, if you will, where, again, this is just kind of a diagram version, but here's the IX probe, same thing I just showed you, right, where on the left you have the modem, on the right you have, you have the uh, customer's edge router, um, and then you really have two buckets here on the left. One is the, the meant to be the MNSP, right, the, the provider, and then uh, at the top, we put as customer, but just like, that's everything else. That's web, internet, you know, whatever the case might be, but, but what it does is, it, is you, you put it in, um, and essentially what it does is adopt the IP address of the edge router. So, so to the outside world, like it's invisible. It's an invisible inline bump. And the only time it'll even do anything with the data is if it sees it coming from what we call a trusted IP list, which, uh, for example, may be you know, their network uh, management system that they've configured with a particular IP address and put on the, the trusted IP list. It could be our Hawkeye server. Um, that's, that once it sees that it's from that IP address, then it'll say, OK, you're, you're wanting to talk to me. You're addressing me as a unit. And it'll let you do you know, software updates or configure it or you know, re reset the traps and change those, whatever the case might be that you're trying to do. I'll pause. Any, any, any questions or anything? Make sense? OK. One question. All right, so, yep. so any traffic designated to that IP address is going to that CPU in the tap? Uh, anything, anything that's coming from this IP address, right. it will, it'll, it'll read it and expect instructions of some sort. Yeah. Is the CPU soft failure going to affect production traffic? No. No. Um, well, so, so to, I guess, technically, uh, when you boot it up, like when it's first power, if it has power and it's still booting up for like, I think, you know, somewhere around four seconds or something like that, technically, you know, it's, it's on, so it hasn't filled over and it's processing stuff. But, but other than that, no, it's line rate, it's a gig. Uh, I don't know if I put that in here or, or, or said it earlier, but, but it's line rate at a gig, yeah. Yeah, problem. All right, so uh, I'll go through this really quickly, but you know, we were talking about the different scenarios. Uh, in this particular scenario, what we've done is we've said, okay, um, you've got the customer network at the top right there. So maybe that's their, their actual enterprise. So if we're talking Taco Bell again, it's Taco Bell or Yum or whoever's you know, enterprise network. On the bottom right, we've assumed they've got a, a, a provider. We've called that cloud. It could be cloud, data center, you know, whatever. It's the provider's kind of uh, environment. And then in this case, we put two carriers. What we're seeing a lot of times is they'll have sort of the main link and then they'll maybe a 4G LTE backup or something like that. Again, eventually maybe that'll be 5G or maybe it'll all be 5G depending on who you talk to. Um, but we put the probe at the kind of the endpoints and then actually, you know, we'll put, you know, it could be another probe, but E1S or some of our higher powered type uh, edge solutions in the actual data center to do a lot of the various tests. So I kind of, I kind of uh, you know, 
blew, blew past it a little bit, but we can do node-to-node -node testing, so between branches, between links, uh, between the main customer's enterprise network or even the provider's network, and so do a lot of kind of path discovery or so on uh, with those pieces. Uh, and then uh, I kind of referenced a couple of times some of the key uh, capabilities that we want to do is just make it really easy to deploy. And so uh, a part of that is the Hawkeye control management interface. And so what you're talking about is having to manage thousands or maybe tens of thousands of these devices. So very quickly, easily kind of group them, deal with them, send upgrades or updates, uh, do the configuration. And then not just that, but all these sort of active monitoring synthetic tests that I mentioned, see those results. Uh, or, um, uh, you know, we, we did it so that you could see it in there, the SNMP kind of traffic as well as the, the synthetic tests. Uh, but then obviously, you know, a lot of customers have a, a, some sort of network management system or monitoring system where they'll just, you know, use the APIs or maybe talk to it directly in the case of the, you know, where we send the SNMP traps and, and information. Um, and then, uh, you know, multi-site user information. The point really um, with that that I think is real, really kind of differentiated from an operational standpoint for these guys is uh, again, we're trying to reduce these truck rolls. We're trying to, trying to make sure that non-technical personnel can work with it. And so what we'll do is we'll take that box, we'll pre-configure it with what, with what the settings are for that customer. And so we'll send them all of those boxes, all they have to do, uh, and maybe it's a QR code, maybe it's a barcode, depends on how they work. Um, they'll hit the box um, that'll tie into their OS and those enterprise accounts, and then they can ship that to that account. They plug it in with those three, you know, the, the power and the two, the two links. It populates um, and kind of hooks up, connects itself to uh, the server, and they're up and running in whatever kind of grouping and configurations that they have. And so, again, uh, designed to be zero touch, both physically and, you know, kind of operationally. So um, I evidently spoke a little bit fast because we actually have uh, plenty, of, plenty of time. But any, any questions? Uh, you know, again, the idea I kind of mentioned before with the training piece is, is mining the gap. And um, as, as, as sort of simple as it seems, it's a real gap, just as, as you mentioned earlier, that uh, service providers and, and some of these enterprises. I, I talked a lot about the service provider case, but again, you know, you take a company like Cigna where They've distributed their, their, their support personnel that are supporting their customers real time and using some, say, UC applications or some of the other back-end applications. If they're on a home network, to do that, again, you're in a situation where, like, is it working right? Is it ready to go? The service activation, turn up, all these kinds of things that they want to be able to do is critical to enterprises and other use cases as well. So we've purpose-built it for that. Um, you know, set it, forget it, and it's an invisible bump on the wire to give them the data they need. Yeah. A question, can it be a synthetic test client device without being inline? Yes, yeah, yeah. So, so I've obviously spoke very specifically to this set of kind of uh, this use case and these set of requirements. Um, it can set out of band as well and act as a, act as a point. Um, we think there'll be a lot of applications for that. I'm actually pretty excited because, you know, we, we, you know, we got a processor in FPGA. I think there's other things we can do over time ranging from some probably interesting security capabilities to maybe more simple but still helpful like NetFlow and, and some of those kind of pieces over time as well. But yeah, absolutely can set out of band. So what about uh, a packet capture? Let's say you're an MSP and they're having a problem getting an SD-WAN box up or something else that they're trying to do, and you've got this out managing the circuit. What are the tools that are available to you in that realm? Is it purely just, you know, is it, is it probing or can you actually log into it and, you know, perform some kind of analytics? Yeah, right, right, now, right now it's probing. Um, so, uh, you know... I'm not personally convinced. Uh, you, know, you guys can tell me what you think. We, we do have a USB device on the back. Mm -hmm. uh, technically, they could use that to do some capture and some things like that. And I think there's other things we can do with Wi-Fi and so on over time. Um, but really, right now, it's designed. It, it, it's a probe. And so, I, again, to your point, I think it's a, that's one of the areas we've talked about. Can you do capture localized or maybe doing some, some sort of small analytics kind of on board? I, I would definitely we'll do it because if you've got a large MSP like doing this and you escalate to, you're usually going to have a few pretty decent network engineers in there. And if they're having a major problem with the circuit that they don't want to send a guy out to and you've got a box there, I would you know, think, I mean, obviously... You, there's so many, so many things you can do with the power of the software and the board, but usually yeah. a packet capture is not terribly stressful, yeah. uh, especially if you're only getting the headers. That might be something to, to look at that I would okay. want if I was putting something out there. No, that's, that's, a, that's a great idea. It, you know, interesting, one of the things we do on the visibility side of the business is um, you can actually configure it. So, for example, let's say um, 
you know, you're hooked up to some, to, to some security tools and they see a threat and they see a problem, they're like, hey, because we see this, we want to see the traffic differently and, and we want to now have you do packet capture or send it to this other direction instead. We do that today and I think some of that same kind of capability of, hey, we see something happening, so go ahead and capture a little bit so we have something we can go peeing and look at and see what's going on and send it to us could be pretty interesting. So you, all, yeah. yeah, all the visibility and, and um, the other features that you have in Hawkeye, are they integrated into the cost of buying this particular probe, or is there a license that you have to have in addition to these probes? Oh, that's a, it's a good question. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't really uh, talk to that at all. So, so I, IX Probe, is, it's, you, you, buy, you buy the hardware, uh, essentially, and then the software is on top. I mean, obviously, you don't have to have Hawkeye to use it, then you don't have the quality of, service, quality of service and quality assurance kind of pieces. But those are two separate things. It's, it's, it's both. You buy them separately. Where do you All have right. this in production right now? Is this, is, it, is this a new product just coming out, or do you guys already have this in prod? No, no, it's, it's, it is a new product coming out. We launched it this week. We'll actually have general availability beginning of November. Okay. Um, we have it with a couple of, uh, a couple of companies. One, one actually was, was a little bit surprising and interesting to me. They actually put SD-WAN boxes in all their sort of deployments, um, and they still wanted a tool like this to, to be able to use. In part, uh, I think when I showed you, uh, you know, the multiple links, is they're not, the, they're not the, the link provider, and then you'll have these backup links and so on. So, so it's because their use case is a little more complicated, um, I think. And then there's another, uh, anyway, there, there's, there's a host of, of companies that we're working with to do, um, I, was, I was about to say POCs, that's kind of, that sounds a lot earlier than it is, where they're actually testing and rolling out for different pieces, but, but it's generally available in November, and that's when we'll have a lot more of the production side. Is there a potential strategy around providing like a 60, 90 day, uh, let's run this for a while, see what we get, and then return it? Yeah, well, I mean, yes. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if we do like the buy and then return, but a couple of things we've thought about is, um, uh, one is some of the use cases we're seeing is they might just buy a few, and then like when they have a problem, kind of kind of send it, do some of the, 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 the testing and triage. Um, uh, but, but another case that we actually were talking about earlier this week was, you know, we've done, uh, I guess, kind of professional services engagements before where, uh, uh, you know, for, for example, it's, it's, it's public information that we worked with uh, Microsoft. They were doing their Skype for business kind of rollouts um, and, and actually most of the, I think that we still do some, it was, it was a little bit, it was maybe a couple of years ago or something where that was really going strong and you know, they had a lot of issues and so they'd sell this, this Skype for business and the, the, and the company would be like, this is crap. It never works. The performance horrible, right? Yeah, that's, that's where I was going with the yeah. client synthetic test, right? Because right. there's some businesses built specifically around Skype synthetic testing for your network. Yeah. So if, if that's part or partnering with them, that this can do it, then it makes it a, an easier case there. Absolutely, and so that, that'll probably be one of the go-to-markets that we, that we lean on pretty heavy. Yeah. I, I'm guessing we'll do it more as a professional service or, mm -hmm. or maybe even kind of a demo kind of a thing uh, to begin with. Yeah.